Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Joe Mo Show. Not on 88.3 FM like it usually is, but we're here in the back studio, so it's kind of close. My name is Giovanni Mosheri. I'm your sports media director here at WXOU. And to my side here is our wonderful guest. He's been an integral part in what we're trying to do at Oakland University, at uh, WXOU Live Sports here. It's Matt Wesolowski. You might have heard him on some of the broadcasts. How are you doing, Matt? Good. How are you? Great to be here. I'm good, man. I'm tired. We both just did a doubleheader today for yes, we um, did. Oakland softball against Purdue Fort Wayne, where they uh, locked up the top seed in the tournament. But Man, double headers are they're rough. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, that was that was rough. We, we both stuck in there though. We did a good job. Definitely. Yeah, we did. Uh, we swapped both play by play and color. Did both of them. I think it was a great broadcast, and uh, we've been at it for long enough to where we have multiple layers of recording, and we were able to end up with one of them that actually worked. So ended up being a fruitful effort. Oh, for sure. So I brought you on the show here today. Um, not just to complain about broadcasts, like actually, <laughs> like actually having to do them, but to talk about you and your background and kind of what brought you here to WXOU. So I want to start by asking, like, where did you find your love for sports? Where, like, how did you get your start in the world of sports, even just as a fan? Sure. So when I started, uh, the first, my earliest memories is being a Lions fan. I know that sounds really brutal. Oh, I mean, um, I, the first sports game I ever got was this is really going back. It was for the GameCube. Oh, I love yeah, GameCube. It, it was. Mad in 2004. It had yeah. Michael Vick on the cover, if I remember correctly. I think I, I have the 07 one with um, Sean Alexander on it. Yes, yeah, yes. 07, I have I, I have 07 too. So um, I had that game, and I played I played the just loving crap out of that. I love that game, and I I always I always kind of had an affinity for football when I started. Yeah. And then I got really into basketball, and I got, I think it was NBA Live 10. And so it was like a lot of video games that started it. Yeah. Plus, I remember um, the the uh, us winning the NBA final against um, LeBron and yeah. uh, Col- or, uh, not LeBron, Kobe and uh, Shaq. Yeah. That was crazy. I remember that. <laughs> I remember 2007, 2011 with the Tigers. Mm-hmm. I, I've always kind of been a Tigers fan, but I, I got away from it. Now I'm further back. But it was hockey. Hockey is my bread and butter. Oh, yeah. And it really started in 2008. I, I watched the Stanley Cup final and I cried happy tears. And then we <laughs> lost in 2009 and I cried sad tears. And um, what led me to here, though, was I when I uh, I went to Clarkston High School, I graduated in 2016. Yeah. When I got out, I did not know what I wanted to do. I know I, I knew I was bad at I was bad at math and I was bad <laughs> at I was bad at um, like science stuff. So I'm like history, language arts. I can so, work in there. Yeah, not, not quite the STEM guy. Right, yeah. So from there, I wanted to go into like English. Mm-hmm. And so after I went into English, then I started to hear rumblings about, you know, once I transferred here, I started to hear rumblings about maybe us having sports. Yeah. And I met um, Ben Schrader. Our, um, he, he was our sports director. Now it's Harsh. We love Ben. Yeah, Ben, ben and Harsh are both great. Harge. And he told me, he said, hey, why don't you, you know, try to call a game and be join us? And so he gave me, he gave his good graces to me, and I called a double header. But it took the entire time until probably about the fifth inning of the first game for us to figure it out. Really? Because we had, we had, ne- we didn't know what to do at the time. This was last year. This was almost a year ago, yeah. or actually over a year ago. And so then finally we get like the fifth, and I'm like, oh. We're on air. We've been talking to air this entire time. It's very quiet. Yeah. You know, and so we're like, oh, okay. So we turn the levels down and we get ready to go. And then this basketball season comes up mm-hmm. and I was able to do a couple games there and I was able to do a couple games like the one I did today with softball yeah. and baseball. But a lot of it for me was my internship after graduating here um, with the Saginaw Spirit, which is a minor league hockey team. And I learned so much about the inner workings. Oh, yeah. And that combined with what I did here has just sent me on the path I want to do sports. So Definitely. And we... And talk, talk to me a little bit more about the Saginaw Spirit, maybe, like, because for me, like, I've learned a lot about it from you, but for those who don't know, kind of, like, walk us through, like, okay, you say the Saginaw Spirit. Well, what like, what is the Saginaw Spirit kind of lay the land for kind of, like, minor league hockey and stuff? Because I know, I don't even know enough about it. You can explain it. <laughs> so, so, um... I'll, well, since you're more of a football fan, yeah. I'll use I'll use this. So when you go to football, you play in high school. Yeah. You go to college. The moment you turn, you know, twenty, like eighteen or nineteen, you get picked into the draft, mm-hmm. and then you're you know on there. So hockey players take a little bit of a different 
detour. Yeah. So if you're in Canada, we'll use Canada. The U.S. is a little different, and overseas is way different. But in Canada, you would play for you'd play for like a travel team, like yeah. a traditional travel team. Um, you would work your way up into. We'll just use the Ontario Hockey League, for example, sure. um, which is where the Saginaw Spirit lay. You would play for a team or a league called the GOJHL, which is the Greater Ontario Junior Hockey League, mm-hmm. and it's one below. So you're like 14, 15 at this point. Sure. So you play in there, and then when you're 16, you enter the draft. And let's say you get picked up by Saginaw Spirit. Mm-hmm. Saginaw Spirit are the highest tier Canadian youth hockey league. A youth hockey league. Yes. Yeah. Or major junior, as they call it. Okay. So you play there from 16 until 20 if you're you know not mature enough. Yeah. Some players leave at 18. Some leave at 19. Um, I'm trying to think of a player I can use it as, as an example. Um, I use Shane Wright. Shane, sure. Shane Wright, uh, he's currently he's playing in the OHL now. He's playing for Windsor. But he was an exceptional status player. Mm-hmm. So he got in a year early at 15. He played with Kingston, the Frontenacs, who's a different, a different team in Canada. Played for three, four years. He then got drafted by Seattle in the year that they started existing because they're a brand new team. Mm-hmm. So he played. He played for their AHL affiliate, which is um, a minor league team for them. Yeah. Uh, they were the I can't think of the name of it. Um, Coachella Valley Firebirds. <laughs> so he played for them, brand new team. He then he did okay. They pulled him up to Seattle. He did really bad. Oh, so yeah. then they sent him back down, and then they sent him back to the the OHL. And I learned about this league from playing video games as well, which yeah. is a lot of my sports stuff comes from. Um, I actually I created a character, you know, like a skater, and I played for the Flint Firebirds, which is a, 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 a competitor to yeah. them. And the Firebirds, they came around in 2015. They're really relatively new team. And so, you know, I like won the championship in the game with them, and it was all fun. Um, and then I... I found about Saginaw and I'm like, well, let me apply to these places. Let me see if I can get an internship. Yeah, throw something their way, yeah. And Flint never got back to me. No big deal. They had someone else already fill the position. But for me, Saginaw took me immediately. They're like, oh, we're looking for people. I applied to do game day. Yeah. So I just walk around the arena, you know, pass out flyers, you know, throw t-shirts, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And they look, take a look at my resume and thanks to Oakland University, looked at it and said, oh, he went to OU you know, we, we can give you something a little more, your, you know, your speed, something yeah. a little better. And so it moved me up to a broadcasting intern, mm. which involves three, it involves main things, which is the pregame and postgame, and then helping out with other stat, the stuff around the arena. Mm-hmm. But the pregame and postgame is the bread and butter. Yeah. So my pregames would be, um, I would, you know, I would look at the previous game mm-hmm. and if there's been, a, if we played the team. So like, we'll say we played Flint. So, we won. We actually beat Flint five to three. Uh, we played eight games. We won five. They won three. Yep. And so I would write, okay, you know, they won this many games, and in this, in the last game, this is what happened, and then go over some players and some just a couple housekeeping things. Now, now is this like a video broadcast or is this a written or a, a written uh, pregame? So or I do broadcast a pregame versus written. My pregames and postgames are written. Written. Okay. Yes. But um, when I do go to the games, I watch a video broadcast. Okay, yeah. So if you're Canadian, you have, um, I think it's your TV is one of them, and Rogers. Mm -hmm. They'll grab some games from your area. And it also should be mentioned, too, uh, something about Saginaw. They actually won the Memorial Cup bid, which the way that this works in this league is there's 60 teams broken up in the three geographic areas. Yeah. You have one in Ontario, one in Quebec, which is also has one in like Nova Scotia, and then you have the West, which is basically everything from like the edge of Ontario over. Yeah. And one team every year, for, it alternates between the three, gets a chance to host this cup. Mm-hmm. And how it works is the winner of every single uh, playoff championship, those three, and then the uh, host nation, they play each other for the Memorial Cup, which has been around for like as long as the Stanley Cup, Stanley Cup has been. Excuse me. Um, and so we won that this year. It's the first time a, a, a team has hosted it since I think the year I was born, 98. And it's just, it's insane that we won it. You know, just, you know, Michigan, we only have two teams. You know, yeah. we're small. And so it was very big. There was a lot of hype around that and learning about, you know, like how these people are, are you know, preparing for this and yeah. like how we're upgrading the arena and around it. And it's it's such an interesting thing. And even as a fan, the tickets are like 18 to $20. I love that. You know, love my, like, like yeah. even that stuff, like even relating it to baseball, like the USPBL. Yeah. Um, 
the uh, Jimmy John's feel like that little stuff. I love that. It's it's cheap tickets. It's a good game, mm-hmm. and it's just it's just fun. It, the stakes are a lot lower, so you could just have a lot more fun with yeah. it. So so I love that. <clears throat> and the thing with the thing with Saginaw too, Flint's is a lot smaller arena. Saginaw is pretty big. Um, they also have a uh, a theater that's attached to it, yeah. and they have sometimes they'll have two events going on. And so someone might go to one event and go, I don't like this. I'm going to see the hockey game, you know, or whatever. People people always have stuff. And they have, you know, like really nice community outreach events and whatnot. And learning about all of that, it's like, okay, so we have the sports, obviously, you yeah. know, like, okay, there's the product on the ice. But what about the back end of it? Mm-hmm. And that's something that I've gotten here, too, which is what started, you know, I, I learned about this before I learned about Saginaw, is like the back end. You know, yeah. like what goes into a radio broadcast? How do we, you know, like what we're doing right now? How what yeah. goes into a podcast? Yeah, you know, it's very interesting. So uh, it's it's solidified me for yeah. sure. And that's a, that's my experience too. Like we're like working here, learning because it's so simple. It's like oh, the guy is just talking about the sport, but that's not that's not that simple. He has to know the players' names. He has to learn how to pronounce them. He has to say them all the time. He has to say the station ID like you know so often. He has to do radio reads and they have to do all the sound testing and stuff. There's so much that goes into what seems like a simple product, but there is it's more back end stuff than it is the actual game. When you when you're actually broadcasting a game, that's the easy part. Yeah. <laughs> Get everything to work is the hardest. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing too, you mentioned that. Um, so my boss, I had uh, my first boss was Joey Batty. You know, mm-hmm. he uh, was with the team for I believe about five six years, and then he went to a uh, another league called the East Coast Hockey League, mm-hmm. which is two below the NHL, and he's with the Orlando Solar Bears now. So oh, wow. it, it's it's a little bit of a lateral movement. Mm-hmm. Um, my current boss, Dylan Clark, he moved up from the Southern Prospects Hockey League, which is a um, I don't want to. I don't want to call it like a beer league, but it is a very. It's a very low, like yeah, single A, ca- casual it, volunteer. Sort of. Yeah, it, it's it's one step higher than like a casual league. It's yeah. very. It's very. And there's nothing wrong with that. He wanted an easy start, and he got you know a great place. Yeah. And so he called there for a year, and then when he saw this job open in Saginaw, he went for it. And him and I learning, you know, about this league together, more or less. But um. The way that he explained to me how he like preps for stuff, I you know I asked him, I'm like, how do you prep for these games? He tells me that you know he stays up like the night before and he looks and goes, okay, you know, here's this player and he goes through it because your your home team's easy. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's the same cast of characters for every game, right? So like. You know, we have um, like Alyssa De Prima, for example. Yeah. You know, for, 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 for Oakland softball. Yes, for Oakland softball. Um, you know, Alyssa De Prima is always going to be there. You know, or um, you know, like Sydney Campbell, for example. Yeah. You know, she's always going to be there. And then in our case, you know, you're always going to have um, like Michael Misa. He's a he's a player on our team. Yeah. Um, or you know, Tristan Lennox, our goaltender. He's always going to start. Um, but when you play a team you don't play, for example, like um, like Ottawa, we don't we play Ottawa twice. And when the the Ottawa 67s come to town, it's like, okay, who are these people? You know, like, <laughs> like you're, you're starting from nothing, right? Usually, usually. now, yeah, right. And then when you we related, you know, back to Oakland University, we played against. Um, the, the, we didn't do this game, but um, I believe it was you and Harj that did the CMU game. Yeah, yeah, we traveled to Central Michigan and called the baseball. We don't play Central Michigan. We played them what, once a year, maybe. You know, like an yeah. invitational. Yeah. So you guys have to like you're looking at this. You're like, who are these people? Exactly. You know, when we did this game most recently, we just came from, we're starting to learn the people. We know, you know, we know some of the people. Yeah, especially like with, for the first season doing it, like I, you know, the, the coaches and. That's you know, the big, like, the coaches too. Yeah, the co- like coaches and all the players for, for Purdue for Wayne softball for, for this example. It's starting from absolute zero. You're learning, you're learning their names mm-hmm. is like literally the, the, is the first step. And that's where we're at. Yeah. For it. So, so that research part of it is huge. Mm-hmm. Now, like last year, I, I went to high school with a girl named Hannah Chadwell. She graduated. Uh, she's a senior uh, this last year. Yeah. Um, she went, to, I graduated, I think she, I think she went to school. I think she graduated high school in 2018, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, she was on the team and I, I feel bad. I never got to interview her. I really wanted <laughs> yeah. to because of the, the home connection. Um, but you know, it's just, you start to see people and you're like, oh, I know who this person is. I know when she's going to come up. Like I interviewed Lauren Griffith, for example, yeah. which we just did. Just and, post it, WXOU radio on Instagram. Yes. Look at that, please. Cause that's, that's, <laughs> that's interview I did too. Um, I interviewed her for a class, uh, yeah. last year 
And, you know, you start to know these people. You start to go, oh, I know who this person is. And like you said, the coaching is so important. Yeah. Because you're going to get interviews with the coaches. You know, you're going to get, like, for example, basketball. You're going to get an uh, interview with Greg Campy. Yeah. For, yeah, the t- think, yeah, the TV always gets Greg Campy. But for us at the radio, Tony Jones is our guy. Yes, Tony time. Jones. Yes. And you're... If you don't know who he is, you're like, okay, why are you coming up to the bench here? Like, yeah, you know, it, but it, like, it's, a, it's a, you're talking to a stranger, and, right? And to get familiar with it, and that's the stuff that I've uh, been told it's very important. It, is you got you got to be familiar. You got to be a, you got to be a familiar face when you're interviewing people. Kind of like build like not like you don't have to be like super best friends with them, but you got to build some kind of a trust to where they can just feel comfortable telling you stuff, yeah, you know, and feel comfortable talking to and working with you. So just just getting that familiarity, like you and you and Griffith, like I, I didn't think she would remember the interview, but she was like, "Oh yeah, I remember, I remember," and it'll be a great interview for that, right? And it's it's the stuff you talk about like beforehand. You know, I asked her, I'm like, "Hey, do you do you remember this interview at all?" Yeah. Because because she, um, her and uh, another player, Cat Bain, she's not here anymore. Um, she was, she, I think she's in Florida now is where she yeah. moved to. Um, both of them gave me a really good insight of like how sports interviews work mm-hmm. because I had never interviewed someone for a sports interview before yeah. and I was incredibly nervous and I yeah. admitted that to them. Yeah. I'm like, uh, <laughs> like, you know, I'm just kind of sitting here like, eh, what do I do? But they were, they were really, they had an understanding and they told me like, Hey, you're fine. You're doing a really good job. And after the interview, you know, I told them, like, thank you so much. They're like, you did really good. We didn't even know you were nervous until you told us. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. That's the best compliment. Right. That's one of the best compliments. And, you know, I can see it, too, with, like, you know, you and Harj and, you know, Gavin and other people who are calling. You, When you call a game, you're listening to it, you're like, wait, you guys have not done this before? Like, you know, this yeah. is like, you've only done it a few times? Like, I would have never known. Yeah. So. Yeah, and part of it for us, the like, it's just something about it just seems kind of natural. Like, you listen... Like before we started doing basketball, I looked up on YouTube like oh uh, radio, basketball radio broadcast. I found like the 2010 finals, the ESPN radio cast for it, and just kind of listened to that, saying like okay, this is, like he'll say like this for a layup, he'll say the name of the ball carrier like this many times, like how often is he talking about the passing and stuff, and you just kind of get more of an intuition for it. Mm-hmm. So it, for us, like for all of us and you included, for calling it basketball and stuff. It's just kind of like talking about what you're seeing. It's just a matter of kind of fitting the vocabulary in. Right. And, you know, to, for like hockey, for example, I listen to a lot of hockey broadcasts in order to learn like what to write and what to say. Yeah. Because um, the thing that I always thought is that every time so, and it's just like basketball, every time someone touches the ball or the puck, you have to say, oh, now he passes to this, passes to that, but you don't. And it gets yeah. exhausting if you do. Because in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, I can't visually you know, describe who, you know, who's touching it if I don't say where they are. Yeah. But if you say like, okay, he passes to behind the net instead of he passes to so-and-so, it's a, it's better. Yeah. Because, so. it, cause what's all, and what's also important. And like, we've been, I've been told this to kind of be more visual with the words because yes. I mean, radio, you're not, you don't have like, you can't see the court. So always saying like, Oh, what Keen Hervey passes the ball to Jalen Moore at the top of the key. You, you, you can kind of visualize where the ball is on that half court, and kind of same thing with hockey behind the net. And you know, especially because the players are moving around all the time, oh, it's yeah. better to find the lo- describe the location that doesn't move. Mm-hmm. And it, with like baseball for today, there was a lot of times where the ball was hit, you know, way back to the fence. Yeah, and it's like, oh, and it's hit left way to the fence, and you know, you can you can see that. You know, you got to try to visualize that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we, we just kind of like went into a bit of a deep dive of what goes behind the radio broadcast, right? But, but for you, um, I wanted to kind of shift gears here. You mentioned yeah. like when you went to Oakland here, you were a commuter student, is that right? Yes. And you were were you, how invested were you in Oakland sports while you were commuting? I'm curious, like your level of like attendance at games. I'm not gonna bash you for it, but I'm yeah. just curious, and we'll kind of go for. Uh, I got some other questions after that. <laughs> sure. So, so. Uh, initially I, I knew we had sports, but when I first joined, I didn't like, it wasn't my first priority. Cause I right. went to, before I, I went to here, I went to Oakland community college yeah. and they had club sports and that was it. And I was like, okay, all right, I'm not going to watch, you know, a bunch of guys, you know, just play for fun. Yeah. And so when I started going here, I, I knew we had a basketball team. Like yeah. I knew I'm like, okay, basketball is our sport. Yeah. And then after my first semester, I decided to kind of like look into it more. Right. And I just, 
I was gonna start going, and then the pandemic hit, right, and yeah. that's what Boom. killed it for me. Yeah, because yeah. I really was starting to get more interested in it at the end of 2019, early 2020, and I really wanted to go to a basketball game because I, I heard my um, one of my cousins went to OU for a little bit, yeah. and the, you know they're telling me they're like, yeah, you know, I went to you know OU and I've been to basketball games, and I'm like, oh, I gotta go to one of those. Yeah, and then the pandemic hit, like right. I said. But I feel like this school, the, the biggest issue is that it is a commuter school. And I feel like if you can get that population, you know, just like a, someone to go, hey, you know, I'm OK. I, I live like, for example, I live in Davisburg. Yeah. You know, let's just say someone lives in like Clarkston or Lake Orion, you know, or somewhere around. And it's like, oh, man, it's a Friday night. You know, like I might as well go to a game. Let's go right. with my friends. You know, I made some friends in class. It's just I don't I don't know how you get that you know it's yeah, difficult. It, it's a hard it's a hard thing to do and for for Oakland and you know and for what we're doing at WXOU, kind of trying to bridge it a little bit between the commuters that aren't there at the arena and uh, and like me like me I live on campus so right. for me like I I couldn't be much closer to the arena but for what we're doing here at the station is trying to bridge that a little bit and mm-hmm. also just kind of grow the popularity of it because for me. I've had even with the even with my friends that lived with me on campus here, it's still like pulling teeth trying to get them to come to a game and like stay for a game and stuff. And you can't expect them to enjoy it as much as me, like a, like a super fan here, you know, like in the media of it. Yeah, but it's it's just so diff. It just seems so difficult to gain that interest, and we're trying our best to kind of grow it a little bit here. <laughs> so for so for you as a commuter, like finally bringing it to a question here. Yeah, sure. So you said you kind of like would invite your friends, say, "Hey, let's let's go and stuff." So, how do you think we could kind of grow that within the commuter uh, student body here? Because I think it's like a seventy thirty ratio, mm-hmm. like seventy commutes and thirty stay on campus. So, for you, like, what, like what could we do to kind of like grow it? Do you think? I feel I feel the the biggest thing is during the orientation. I feel like that's when you gotta like. You gotta go for it. I don't remember my orientation. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but it was a long time ago. Was, I remember I had a mask on for mine, 2020. <laughs> right. It was. So, but you—that's you, where you have to get it because you know if someone's coming here, someone's someone might be coming here because they live in Rochester, for example, yeah. and they'd rather go here than you know Rochester University. Yeah. Just just for example, and you want to you want to be like, hey, listen. We have Division One sports. Like this is a great time for you to meet people. Yeah. You know, just just that. And then people will go, oh, it's Division One. Like I didn't know it was Division One. Yeah. Just saying, just saying that kind of like, well, could you know, spark a uh, interest in it, right? Because so I feel like some people just think we have Division Two because we're a smaller school, right? You know, or, or we just have like club sports or whatever. Because it's like Oakland and sports, like that's kind of weird. Right. But then I think the other thing too, and I, I don't know how much you know we want to go into this, but like we could use athletes like say Kendrick Nunn for example yeah you know and say look Kendrick Nunn went on to the NBA we have an NBA player who went to Oakland University yeah and Jamal Jamal Kane on the yeah Jamal Kane yeah yeah so I feel like that's where you hit it but I feel like along with that I feel like the the uh like journalism department and like the communications department is where you can definitely like push it yeah because um you know if you're a journalist and Okay, sure. Maybe you want to, you don't want to do sports journalism, which sure. is fine. Yeah. You should definitely go to a sports game and just write about it just to give it a try. It's great practice. Yeah, in maybe like in, in the like intro to journalism, one, like just one game summary. Yeah. You know, just, just because if it's a general thing, you kind of get a feel for for the realm of it. And it is just kind of an excuse to kind of like yeah, push people into the arena into the sports thing. So like I so tying it into the curriculum for that kind of stuff, I could see that being a, you know, a good way to do it too. I think that's that's a great way is to go after the curriculum. Um, the, the important thing too is, you know, like you said, you know, with these commuters, a lot of people just the moment that they're done with their class, they just get in their car and leave. Yeah, you know, it, it's keeping those people around, and I don't know how to do that. Yeah, because then, because I mean, at that point, you're starting to like, you know, everyone's got a schedule, they got stuff to do on their own. That that you you can't you can't mess with that. But, yeah, but I get what you mean because if somebody has a class from like. Let's say three thirty to five seventeen. I think it's, it's one of the popular time slots for class. Yeah, five seventeen. That's that dinner time. You go home for me. Yeah, I'm thir- like for me at Macomb. I'm thirty minutes away, so I, I get home six o'clock. Like that. That's dinner time. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be really hard to get people to stay there. But it, that's <sighs> and, and like I asked this question like without an answer for myself. But yeah, it's something that I just I wish Oakland had more of a sports identity and. 
you said to like do it at the orientation. That that's an awesome idea. Just to kind of like from the get go, there, there's sports. You don't have to be convinced that there is. Mm-hmm. You know, you just come in and you know it. I think I think it's got to be that, and I think it's got to be included into the marketing. Yeah, because the and the thing, and I I know that sounds kind of wild. Like, okay, you know, I'm gonna go to Olkin University to watch sports. Like that doesn't. I know that doesn't make sense, but it's got to be in there. Yeah, because. You know, if you go to, we'll, we'll use your bigger school, for example. Let's say you go to, like, Michigan State. Yeah. You're going to watch Michigan State basketball. You're that's gonna, yeah. their bread and butter. And you're going to go to football. Like, right. Like, like, that's that's a big part of their identity. And and hockey, too. You know, yeah, yeah. Th- those those three sports are, are you know, that's that's their thing. And with, you know, like, U of M football. Yeah. There's people who, I, I think majority of the people who are, like, season ticket holders don't go to the school or don't yeah. know anybody. Or, like, did, or like didn't go to the school in the yeah. past. Yeah. They're just, they're just, they have no connection. They're just, yeah, I live in Ann Arbor and I'm going to go. And I feel like, you, you know, this is a, this is a, a, you know, good enough area, large size, Rochester and by that extension, Auburn Hills. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people here. It's, it's almost you have to draw them in too, you yeah. know, non non sports people, you know. Yeah, you know, like okay, sure, the palace at Auburn Hills was really nice exactly. for yeah, basketball I was, fans. I was about to bring up the palace, yeah. Yeah, but okay, we have a basketball team here. It's Division One. Mm-hmm. We play against MSU every year. We play U of M every year. You know, when when that time comes, you know, come to the game. Now, I know we don't play at the arena against MSU. Right. But I'm just saying when you know, okay, go to a game, just experience it, you know? Yeah, and, and I have a lot of friends that are like, oh, yeah, I went to one game and they lost. To, to me, like... And maybe maybe just because those friends aren't as much of a sports fan as me, but to me that's it's such a disappointing thing to hear. Like, oh, I didn't go because they suck. It's like that. That's to me like as like now I'm getting to more like my my view of it. It's not to me. It's not about whether the team is good or not. Mm-hmm. It's about the fact that it's your team. I, like for me, Oakland and even like the other the, the Detroit teams I follow. I'm from I'm from Southeast Michigan. I go to Oakland. That's part of me and I don't really care about what right. like how they do. It's the fact that they're they're mine, you know, they're my team and I want and I want to go and cheer for them. And I kind of wish there was a little bit more of that at Oakland. And it's yeah. not because not as much because of of the commuting thing. People don't spend as much time on campus and kind of get a chance to feel that. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's important for just any sports team no matter what it is, even beyond college stuff. Um, I'll give you an example. I've gone to a lot of Columbus Blue Jackets games. Mm-hmm. I am not from Columbus. I never lived in Ohio. I don't know anybody from Ohio. Yeah. But I've gone because it's fun. And I'm like, oh, I like this, you know, this team. And more to that, um, my dad, for example, we, we went on a road trip right before the pandemic, actually like days before it hit. Oh, wow. Um, we went from, we went to Columbus and then Pittsburgh, Philly, New Jersey. Yeah. And the moment we got to New Jersey, we went there and we're like, more people need to be fans of this team. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's kind of sad because when I bought these tickets, I still get like emails saying, please buy season tickets from us. I get yeah. calls all the time from Columbus and New Jersey. Yeah. And it, the problem is, you know, you going back to, you know, OU you have this decent area. It's how do you get the other people involved and they need more of an identity. And I yeah. feel like either during the orientation or during ads, it could help. So. Yeah. And even, and yeah, cause I feel like is if you just spread the word that of the fact that there are sports, I got a lot of friends that are like that. Like you were saying, they don't know that there's sports here. Mm-hmm. They would go if they knew, but it's just about like a social media push for it. Or, or even like people like us just to talk about it. Right. Like, to, like to our friends and be like, Oh, like, like a lot, like a lot of times that's the reaction is like, Oh, so maybe it's just a matter of like, maybe not like how they're spreading the word, but just spread it more. Mm-hmm. Right. So maybe, maybe that, that could be the key here. We're going to be continuing uh, finding the mystery to, uh, to Oakland sports here in a little bit, but I do, I am going to have to wrap it up here for this episode of the Jomo show. This one was a bit of a rambler, just a nice conversation with me <laughs> and my buddy Matt here. Um, you know, just, just getting done from uh, calling a, a softball game. Or two softball games, three if you count yesterday. Yeah. Uh, just a great conversation to have. So I really appreciate you coming on the Joe Mo Show with me, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this was this was really fun. And uh, obviously, you know, the best way to find me is to listen to 88.3 WXOU. <laughs> exactly. I mean, to be honest, um, I'm not really on any social media, unfortunately. I, I just, I keep I keep off of it. But... No problem staying underground here. Yeah. But don't worry, we'll be back here at WXOU. The live studio will be here Thursdays at 6 with your Oakland Sports Update. We'll be sure to mention the the softball that we covered here today, as well as another interview. We'll be right back here on WXOU.